G'day mate, Clinton Anderson here from Down Under Horsemanship. Well, welcome back to our Titan series. Uh, it's been, so far it's been a tremendous success. You guys have been emailing us and telling us how much you enjoy the series. So I, I'm really proud of that and I'm glad you guys are getting a lot out of it and improving your partnerships with your horses. What's going on, big boy? How's my boy? Well, in this particular episode, we're going to be talking about uh, a big transition in, in Titan's training and Titan's career. You know, this is kind of hard for me to admit, and I really had to be honest with myself, is that, um, you know, in 2017, I'm on the road on average about three weekends a month. And when I say weekends, you know, we're talking Thursday through Tuesday, basically. So it really hasn't left me very much time at all at home to ride Titan. Oh, yes. Does that feel good? <laughs> good boy. So I had to be honest with myself and say, you know what, what is in the horse's best interest? And it was in the horse's best interest to, to be moved to a, a horse trainer that was going to be able to give him that consistency of five or six days a week leading up to his horse shows. You know, I think the horse has got a great foundation on him, but this next part of his training and his career is very crucial that it gets handled correctly. And that was hard for me to be honest about that because I've waited a lifetime to be able to, you know, ride and train and show a horse of this kind of caliber. So I'm not going to lie to you, it, it hurt a little bit. So once I made that decision that I wasn't going to be able to train and show Titan, I had to say to myself, okay, where am I going to send this horse? Who am I going to have choose to ride him? So this is the criteria that I chose to, to make my decision. I needed to find a horseman that was a great trainer, but they were a horseman first. What do I mean by a horseman first? Somebody that really cares about their horses, cares about the way that they look, cares about their mental health, cares about their physical health. I also had to find a trainer that had the same foundation beliefs as what I do, getting a horse soft and supple, getting a horse collected, getting a horse to carry himself and round his back. There's no point me picking a trainer that has a completely different set of training values to me because that would set Titan up for failure, not success. I always tell you, set your horse up for success, not failure. And the third criteria is I had to say to myself, okay, who is competitive? Who meets these first two requirements but actually has the experience, the ability, and the competitive experience to go win at the world-class level that I want this horse to perform at? Now, we don't know if he's gonna be that good or not. We're hoping he is. So far, he's given us a good indication of it, but we don't know for sure. So I've gotta find a trainer that has the experience to go win at that upper level. Uh, you know, the best in the business, okay? So after I went through all of those questions and I really you know, thought about it for two or three weeks and took my time, I came up with the trainer Andrea Fapani. When I got the call from Clinton about three, four months ago that he wanted to do something different with his program, it was right around uh, December, it was right after I won the Futurity. So I had two Christmas presents this year. One was the Futurity, the second one was Clinton calling me and telling me that he wanted to maybe put Titan into my program. As a horse trainer, it doesn't matter how many good horses you have. To have something special like Titan, it just makes your day go by a lot faster. When it really came down to the total package, I chose Andrea to take Titan's reins over from me because I really feel like he'll fit the horse the best and the horse will fit him. There's not a, a big difference. I'm gonna turn the reins over to Andrea. I know I'm gonna learn a lot from the upcoming months of what Andrea is doing with Titan. I hope you enjoy and uh, the journey that we're going to go on. This is very unique what we're doing. We've pretty much trained a horse, a reigning horse, for the world to see from the start to the very end of it. We don't know where this is going to end, but it's been a great journey so far and it's only going to get better. Good morning guys, Andre Fapani here. Today we're going to start with Titan and I'm going to want to show you guys how I'm going to continue the training process that Clinton has already started and that you're so accustomed to how to prepare him for the show pen. Everything is being covered as far as the maneuvers. You've seen him stopping, you've seen him turning. He does all the parts. I brought Titan home about three months ago and I spent these 90 days 
kind of getting used to him. I think that Clinton's done a great job getting into this point, and now my job is to get him ready to the show pen. So I'm here today because I want you guys to be familiar with what I'm going to do as far as exercises to get him ready. As I've said, he knows all the parts. What I'm going to be concentrating on today is to get Titan thinking about the show pen, thinking about what that next maneuver is going to come, and making sure that the transition from one maneuver to the next is clean. A lot of people can stop and turn big, they can mark a plus one maneuver, but they can't transition to the next maneuver with enough finesse to really get to the top level. What we really want to concentrate is that smooth pattern. A lot of guys are scared to practice patterns at home because they feel that the horse is going to start anticipating. I'm kind of the opposite. I'm not going to practice whole patterns, but I'm going to practice pieces of the patterns because I feel that, especially with a young horse like Titan, if you don't get them used to that pattern, they're going to be surprised when you go show. To me, a horse that's anticipates, it's later on in their uh, show career. Maybe a six, seven year old that's going to start anticipating, I'm obviously not going to practice patterns. But on a young horse that has not been shown, to me, to go show without ever practicing, it's just a stupid idea because that horse is not going to be used to it. You're going to surprise him and then bad things happen. So on a young horse like Titan, I want to make sure that he's comfortable putting the maneuvers together and I want to make sure that when I walk in the show pen, there's not going to be any surprises. I want him comfortable going in, walking to the middle and starting that pattern. We obviously don't know what pattern we're going to be doing, so we're not going to practice a certain pattern. But if you guys notice, the maneuvers get put together pretty much the same way in every pattern. So after a turn, there's going to be another set of turns. After a lead departure, there's going to be either some fast circles or slow circles. So that's what we're going to practice today. Different maneuvers and how to put them together. I start all my lessons by warming my horse up, but I don't warm him up just to warm him up and soften him up. Just even at the jog, as I'm gonna to start today with Titan, I'm gonna start working on a few things that I think are important when I walk into the show pen. I ask myself, what is it that I'm gonna need when I go walk in that show pen? And just so that you guys know, my practice, it's gonna be on walking patterns. I, at this stage, I don't wanna scare my horse and start practicing running patterns. I don't think he's ready for it, and most likely at some of the futurities or the early derbies, you're gonna, not gonna have a, <clears throat> a running pattern. So the first few pieces of the pattern that we're gonna practice are gonna be the walking pattern. I wanna make sure that my horse can walk to the middle without me touching his face, and I can steer my horse without having to touch his face. I feel myself that every time you're touching your horse's face, you're telling the judges that you're checking on things, that you're trying to keep his mind on you, which is actually the truth, so I think it's not as nice to look at for a horse that walks in the show pen with the rider always picking up on him. So what I usually do when I warm my horses up, I pick up the jog and I wait for Titan in this instance to look at something. That to me, that tells me that he's losing his attention on me and instead of picking up on his face, I'm gonna steer him the opposite direction. If he doesn't steer, like here, he's still focused on you guys, I'm gonna make sure that I pick up, I soften him up, and I make him look the direction where he should have steered. So I'm gonna still do what I always do as far as softening him, but I'm gonna give him a signal first. Right now he's looking at my barn that's on that direction. I'm gonna ask him to steer the opposite direction. This time he kind of steered, but now he's hesitating. I'm gonna make him steer a little bit more and take advantage of the steering and softening him up. We're always gonna finish that steer with the softening. So I'm doing two things here. I'm still gonna soften my horse, supple him, get him ready to go to work, but I'm working on his mind. 
Because to me, it's important that when I lose his mind and I just steer, I get it back just like he did here. If you notice, he steered and he dropped his neck. So when I go show, if he's looking at the crowd and I need to walk to the middle, all I have to do is steer him. And that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna drop that neck and steer towards that center to where I don't have to pick on his face and, and reset his face and reset his head position. So this is just warming him up and making sure that he's listening to where my hand is going without having to touch his face. And that's gonna be real important for me for the whole pattern. Meaning that if I do my job right, I feel that I can train my horse to do the whole pattern without really touching his face. Obviously, you know, there's always things that happen and sometimes you might have to pick it up. But what we're gonna work here at home is to, for that perfect pattern that most likely it's not gonna happen, but that's what we're gonna strive for. We're always gonna strive for excellence and we're gonna settle somewhere, hopefully, pretty close to it. So what I'd like to do is making sure that even when I pick up the lope, I can do the same thing. If I have to pick up my lead and pick up on the horse's face before I can speed him up in the circles, to me, it's gonna take some points away from my overall score. A lot of people train different at home than they do in the show pen. What I really want to concentrate in these couple lessons with you guys is that I try to force myself to ride the same exact way here at home that I, what I'm going to do in the show pen. I'm going to give the horse the same signals. I'm going to sit the same on the saddle. I'm going to try to do everything I can for that horse to not see any difference from when we're training here at home and when we go in the show pen. So once I got my horse to where he's soft. I feel that I spent a good five, 10 minutes warming him up to where he's not gonna get hurt if we start going fast right away. I'm gonna start my circles in the center of the arena, just like I would when I go show. As I said, I think you can do quite a bit the same here at home that you do in the show pen without scaring your horse and getting him used to it. Once he starts anticipating, then we'll move away from some of these maneuvers. But for this point, this horse shouldn't anticipate because he doesn't know what's coming up next. So it's up to us to really teach him what's gonna come up next. The way I like to lop off in the show pen is to show the judge that I'm not scared that that horse is gonna pick up the wrong lead. I'm not gonna make sure that I've got a, that horse set up to where if I lop off to the left, I'm picking up his face, I'm shoving his hip over, I'm doing all this. To me, that's just telling the judge that my horse is not broken enough to just go pick up the lope. I've done all those exercises to teach Titan, or Clinton has to teach Titan to pick up the right lead, which in this instance is the left lead. But to me now, I wanna make sure that I can pick up that lead without having to set him up. He's done it for a year and a half, two years. He needs to know his job and it's up to me to make sure that he does know that job. So the way I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna pick, make him get some forward motion and take a couple steps forward. I'm gonna lay my left leg on him because Titan can hear me. Instead of using my voice to tell him to lope off, I'm gonna use my hand. So in this instance, what I'm gonna do, my leg is gonna tell him which lead we're gonna pick up. My hand is gonna tell him when to pick that lead up. I don't really want to teach him that as soon as he feels the leg, he's going to pick up that lead because he might get a little tight on me. He's real quiet, but some other horses, the reason why I don't do that is because a lot of times if you just put your leg on him and they jump into the lope, it just gets a little bit quick in the show pen. I'd rather have two signals. The leg is going to tell him which lead we're going to pick up. My voice, and in this instance, not the voice, but my, my hand, it's going to tell him when to pick up that lead. As I pick up the lead, I'm going to leave his face alone. And because today we haven't warmed him up very much, I can guarantee you that he's probably not gonna focus on me a whole lot, the first couple circles. It's gonna be up to me to decide when to correct him and how to correct him. So what I'm gonna do is pick up that lope, leave my hand down and give him the signal to lope a big circle. We're not speeding him up yet. I wanna see what I've got going slow. If I feel that Titan's not concentrating on me, I'm gonna introduce some steering, just like I did at the jog. So I'm gonna take a couple steps forward lay my right leg on his side. Now he knows we're supposed to pick up the left lead. With my hand, I'm gonna tell him, okay, now let's pick it up. And he picked it up fine. I see his ears concentrating on something else other than me, but he's in the circle. So I'm not gonna fix that, because he's still in the correct position where I want him to be. I've got my hand down on his neck, light neck rein on him to tell him to stay in that left circle, and then we're gonna see what he does. Like I said, I see, I noticed these ears looking around, so I know he's not paying attention to me 100%, but like I said, I'm not gonna fix that, because I wanna make sure that even when he doesn't pay attention to me 100%, he's in the maneuver. Now he's leaning out a little bit, I'm gonna tell him to steer. He hasn't, just like I did at the jog, I'm gonna soften him up and make him oversteer. 
If I fix, as soon as he loses his attention, if I fix it by picking him up, when I go show, I know he's gonna lose his attention a little bit. I wanna make sure that when I go show, even if he loses his attention, I don't have to pick him up. That's why I'm waiting for him to actually leave the circle, like here, to steer him. And this time, as soon as I steered, he came back to the circle, so there's no point of me softening him up and picking his face up. When I go show and he leaves that circle a little bit or thinks about it, I want to make sure that I can just steer him and he'll come right back. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, I'm not going to spend 20 circles because I know that as soon as I'm going to get him a little more tired and get him less fresh, he's probably going to concentrate on me pretty good. So on my young horse that I'm trying to prepare for the show, I'm going to test him when he's fresh. To me, the first 10 minutes of the ride are gonna be what I'm gonna feel in the show pen. If he feels pretty crappy, the first 10, 15 minutes I ride my horse, he's probably gonna feel pretty crappy when I go show him. So now to test it, I'm gonna steer him into a small circle. I'm pretty happy with the big circles. I'm gonna test the small ones. He steered real good to the left. He's still looking to the right a little bit, so he's telling me he's not concentrating on that small circle, and now, if you notice, he left that small circle. So I'm gonna put him back. This time he didn't look to the left, when I steered him, so I'm gonna pick his face up, get him where I want him to be. If you notice, I always give him the signal first and then make him do it. He's still thinking about leaving this small circle a little bit. He'll probably do it one more time. Right here, he does it. I'm gonna steer him. This time, when I steered him, he came right back, so no point on touching his face. I'm gonna keep my hand in the position where I'm gonna go show, which is down low on the neck. You don't have to touch the neck, but you don't want to keep it up high. Still thinking about going out there a little bit. His ear, right rear ear, is going back and forth, but he's staying in the small circle, so I'm not going to fix him thinking about it. I'm only going to fix it if he actually commits to it. If he does one small good circle, I'm going to step it up and just go start speeding him up. If you notice, I'm moving through things pretty quick, and the reason is, is because I don't want to wear him out. That's going to make it too easy for him to concentrate on me. I want to test him when he's fresh. Same thing when I'm going to go speed him up, I'm not going to touch his face, I'm just going to go fast. How fast? Depending on how comfortable your horse is, he's pretty comfortable, I'm going to go at pretty good speed. His ears are up, but he's staying with me, I'm, I'm good with that. Good at this speed. Let's test him and go a little faster. Feels good going fast. I'm gonna slow him down in the center. Now here he slowed down, but he didn't slow down the right way. The reason why I'm pushing his hip underneath him, because instead of slowing down and keep loping and stay collected, he slowed down almost too hard to where he slid, and then he had to break gate to get back to the lope. That's a real big penalty in the show pen. I know if I would have had him in a perfect position to where I would have softened him up and got, gathered him up before that slowdown, he probably would have slowed down just fine. But this is exactly why I don't want to set him up, because I want to expose everything that may happen in the show pen. So now something that I wasn't happy with was the fact that he slowed down in the wrong position. So I'm gonna have to address that. And that's one thing that I want you guys to understand. It's not like I'm gonna practice patterns and let things be and let him do things wrong. I'm gonna start a piece of a pattern and then I'm gonna wait for something to happen. If nothing happens, I keep moving on to the next maneuver. But if something happened, like in this case, I'm gonna need to address this. We're gonna go back and redo it and see what he does. If he doesn't do it right next time, I might <clears throat> get after him just a little bit more to say, hey, you need to remember what we're supposed to do. He knows how to slow down just fine. He just wasn't concentrating enough. So I'm gonna pick up my lope in the small slow. Make sure he stays quiet. And then this time, when I'm gonna go fast, I'm gonna only do one big fast circle. I was happy with the fast circle, I just wasn't happy the way he slowed down. A 
let's see what happens. We'll just do one fat circle. Still, I'm not checking on his face. I'm gonna let him look around, let him do whatever he wants. I wanna make it hard on myself. Harder at home, the easier it is to show. The easier it is at home, the harder it is to show your horse. Still not looking at me. That time it came back good. I'm gonna go straight into that small slow like I would when I go show. Oh. Now this time it didn't take much. We only did it once and we reminded him and he came back and did it just fine. But sometimes that doesn't happen. If you notice, I did it right in the center, right where I wanna go show. If I feel that I gotta do it more times, then I'm gonna move away from the center. Meaning that I'm gonna practice two or three times in the same spot of when I go show. If I gotta do it more than that, and I feel that I've gotta get after my horse to where he may associate that spot with something bad happening, I'm gonna move away from that, show, from, from that spot. I feel that I can slow him down anywhere in the circle and it's gonna be very similar to the middle of the arena. So we don't want him to think that the middle of the arena is a bad thing or I'm gonna get after him in the middle of the arena. I'm gonna practice things in the middle, but if I need to work on that thing, I'm gonna move away from the middle and find another spot. Hey mate, I hope you've enjoyed the Titan YouTube series. If you have, make sure you subscribe and follow Andrea as he takes Titan through his show career.